good afternoon, everyone. Uh, once again, welcome to the IIS discussions. We are very happy and proud to have our honorable guest for today, His Excellency, Ambassador of the Republic of Korea. And I believe uh, all of you is not only students in our Department of International Relations, but also came from other departments as well. Uh, is there any students from uh, Department of Korean Studies or Korean Cultures? Okay. And we also have, I think, some students from Department of Psychology, if I'm not mistaken, isn't it? Yeah. So, welcome. Uh, this is actually a general lecture for all. We hope that for about the next 90 minutes, we will have a fruitful discussion. And especially, we hope to have more updates regarding the bilateral relation between Indonesia and South Korea. So before um, he, we hear the presentation from His Excellency uh, Mr. Ambassador uh, Tae Yong Joo, I would like to read a brief biography uh, from a very long experience of His Excellency itself. Well, actually, uh, His Excellency is a South Korean career diplomat He's also a special representative for Korean Peninsula for Peace and Security Affairs. He's also one of the top delegates to the Sixth Party Talk of Korean Peninsula Nuclear Issues, which is also one of the uh, high politics issues in the East Asia regions. As well, he's also a former Director General of the South Korean Foreign Ministry Task Force on North Korea, so it will be interesting to also know perhaps his experience on uh, these positions. As well, he is also a former South Korean ambassador to Australia, which is also now one of the hot issues in our country. So there are uh, several biography from His Excellency uh, Tae Yong Chu. And without any further delay, I would like to invite His Excellencies to present uh, regarding updates of the promising development of Korea-Indonesia diplomatic relations. Let us uh, give a big applause. Thank you. Selamat siang. Uh, nama saya Jo Tae-yong. Jo is my last name. In Korea, we put last name first. So my friends call me Jo Tae-yong, not Tae-yong Jo. Tae-yong Jo in English, I mean, Nana. So my name is very similar to Jo Kovi. <laughs> jo Tae-yong, Jo Kovi. So, it is the easiest way of remembering me, right? Don't forget my name. What was my name? Oh, yeah. uh, similar to President's name, right? Jokovic, uh, Jokovic, Jokovic. Three syllable, starting from Jo, right? <laughs> Don't forget me. And then, uh, thank you for coming. And then I must say that I, I'm very honored uh, to have a chance to say a few words in front of you. Uh, students of this great university, Uge. Uh, this is my first time to visit this great university. And I heard much about your university, one of the best universities in Indonesia. And a full university full of bright students. Eh? Uh, students in <laughs> uh, I'm learning uh, Bahasa Indonesia uh, two times a week. Uh, of course, that's not enough. But anyway, uh, my uh, Bahasa Indonesia is going forward on the gym. <laughs> uh, I'm learning from a, a uh, graduate of UI, Universitas Indonesia, a uh, lady. She uh, studied uh, Korean the language, Bahasa Korea, in UI. And then she's teaching me now. Uh, very, I mean, the smart lady. Uh, 25 years old, young lady, but very smart. So I'm lucky to have that kind of smart I mean, teacher of Bahasa Indonesia. And then uh, I learned uh, eight Indonesian songs too for the last 11 months. I came here last, I mean May last year, so 11 months ago, right? And then I learned eight uh, Indonesian songs. The reason I'm learning Indonesian songs, I mean the memorized Indonesian songs, uh, two, two reasons. First. I want to have a better understanding of your feeling, your sentiment, your culture. 
through uh, Lagu songs. And then uh, while learning uh, songs, I can pick up many new vocabularies and very good expression, poetic expression. So that is why I'm, I'm, I'm learning uh, Indonesian songs. So my goal is to know, to learn up to 20 Indonesian songs. Till now, Sayasuna Munafa Tulapan Lagu Indonesia. Oh, my favorite. Uh, I don't know whether you know this song. Uh, it, it, this is rather old song. I heard that this song was popular in the 1970s, before you were born, right? <laughs> <laughs> when were you born? 94. Oh, I see. A little bit after I was born. <laughs> so this song uh, was popular in 1970s and then the title of the song is Cintanya Pramuria. Cintanya Pramuria. The love of a hostess. Cintanya Pramuria. And then I learned two songs, uh, Oled Masi. Zaman uh, Kanyora and Cinta Ini Mabunuku. Very romantic, right? Cinta Ini Mabunuku. And then I learned uh, Bhagavan Solo, uh, and then uh, Indonesia Raya, Satanusa Satavangsa, uh, uh, and then I learned uh, one Christian song, Say Christian, uh, uh, Jesus Sayang Padaku. Uh, so I'm going to uh, uh, maybe talk about two things today. Uh, I'm going to speak for about 40 minutes. Uh, uh, so. Uh, the remaining 30 minutes, I want to have Q&A discussion with you. So I will start at 3 o'clock. And then uh, I'm going to talk about many two things. First, the relations between our two countries. And then uh, secondly, mainly about North Korea, Korea of Dara. Uh, first, let me ask you, how much do you know about Korea and Korean Peninsula, Sumananji Korea? How much do you know? Let me ask you some questions. Where is Korea? Where is Sumananju Korea? Can you pinpoint with your finger? Huh? Huh? Big, loud voice, loud. Where? Kimano? Near Japan. Near Japan, I see. Okay. Now, how big is Sumananju Korea? How big? Huh? How big? Pardon me? How big the size of territory? How big? Uh, the Korean Peninsula is about 220,000 uh, square kilometers. And then South Korea, Korea's uh, Slatan, uh, is about uh, 100,000 square kilometers. So, uh, in comparison with Indonesia, your country, Indonesia is nine times bigger than Korean Peninsula and then 19 times bigger than Korea Slata. So you're living in a big, very big country and then your population is about 250 million, right? Uh, South Korea around 50 million. So five times bigger than Korea in terms of population, size of population. So Indonesia is a big country uh, with big population, uh, full of smart people. Uh, and then, let me start. So, Korea-Indonesia comparison. Let's start. Okay. So, you can see where Korea is, right? And then you know the difference between Korea of Tara and Korea Slatan, right? Uh, Korea of Tara is North Korea. Korea Slatan, South Korea. And then the, the official, official name of Korea Slatan, what is it? Republic of Korea. Then what is the official name of Korea Otara? Huh? Pardon me? You, you. Uh, Democratic? Uh, Democratic People's Republic of Korea. EPRK. That is Korea Otara. And as you know, Korea Otara, 
socialist, communist country. Korea Zlatan, like you, capitalist, democratic society. Yeah. <laughs> 1920. Population, five men. GDP, gross domestic product, almost the same. Almost the same. All the statistics. So your GDP is about one trillion US dollar. You know trillion. For this trillion in Dalam is a trillion. Yeah. Trillion, 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 trillion. Same, same, some of them. But and then uh, my country's GDP is a little bigger than one trillion uh, US dollar. So in terms of size of economy, some are similar. Per capita GDP, my, our, I mean, the South Korea per capita GDP is a little bit higher, right? Okay. And then trade, trade between the two countries. Uh, in the year 2011, the trade volume reached 30 billion US dollars. But after that, it declined. Now, 24 or 25 billion US dollars. So we need to work hard to promote the trade between our two countries. Next. Next. Uh, as you know, we share values, right? Market economy. We have market economy, South Korea's market economy, and democracy. You can say whatever you want to say, right? Here. So that is democracy. And then uh, National agenda that we carry to contribute to international peace, security, and prosperity. You share that. Next. Uh, we began to have diplomatic relations in 1973. So, this year, 42nd anniversary, right? My mathematics is right. Okay. Uh, next. So around 50,000 uh, Dimapulu Wibu, Orang Korea, living in Indonesia. And then around uh, 35,000 Indonesians are living in Korea. Next. And then uh, for the last 42 years, there were many exchanges or visits by the leaders of both countries. You can see the familiar face there, right? Uh, the face of SPY. Huh? Uh, SPA. And the uh, face of my former president, Lee myung -bak. And then the present president, incumbent president, Madame Bak Okay, next. Oh, uh, yes. You know, there's so many times there were visits by presidents of both countries. So for the last uh, 10 years, uh, there were 12 visits by the presidents of each, uh, both countries. Seven from Korea, five from Indonesia. Uh, I am a Korean diplomat. You know Korean diplomat? I joined Ministry of Foreign Affairs right after I graduated from university. And I'm still working there. Very simple-minded man, right? Loyal man. <laughs> and then, uh, I've never seen this kind of figure. This is very special figure. Next. And then, uh, last December, in Busan, you know Busan, in Korea, there was a special summit meeting between ASEAN and Korea. So the, the 10 leaders from the 10 ASEAN countries, they came to Busan to have a special summit meeting. It was great success. And you can see your president's face there, right? His Excellency, Mr. President Joko Widodo. Next. Uh, defense sector, uh, you know, the there we can find very special relations between the two countries. Uh, you know the T-50, 
T50, that is a trainer jet, uh, jet fighter, lightly armed jet fighter, mainly for training of pilot. Uh, South Korea developed that uh, jet uh, trainer airplane, and then uh, Indonesia bought 15 T-50I from Korea, and Indonesia is the first country to buy that plane from South Korea. We really appreciate that. And then, we bought military aircraft from Indonesia too. Have you heard about CN-235? That is a military aircraft for transportation, not jet fighter, transportation. We, we, we imported 12 of them, and we are still using them. Still using them. Next. And then, this is very important. Don't forget this. You know, your country and my country are now in close cooperation to the world, to develop real jet fighter, like American F-16. So, jointly develop this jet fighter and then we will, use, we will use the same jet fighter and the target year is 2025, 10 years from now, right? So same jet fighters, airplanes, military airplanes will fly here and fly in Korea. This is amazing. This is, you know, the F-16 Plus class jet fighter. A little bit uh, better than present F-16. In the year 2025, from 10 years from now, America will no longer produce this F-16. Then why do, you, why do we try to develop that old, old, the outdated old type of jet fighter? Why? Why? You know what? First, first, we cannot compete with America in the area of defense equipment, right? You know that. And then that airplane is old model, so America will no longer produce in 2025. But at the same time, there will there's still be a demand for that kind of aircraft. Everybody doesn't need to buy Mercedes Benz, right? That is why we are trying to develop that jet fighter to avoid competition with America. And then still, that airplane has demand. Isn't it wise? So we are now in close cooperation, joint development of jet fighter. This also shows a one more special aspect, relations between our two countries. Next. OK, so. Uh, and then the, uh, Indonesia decided to buy three submarines from South Korea too. Next. And then energy and natural resources, big cooperation is going on. We are importing coal, natural gas, oil, rubber, natural rubber, palm oil, everything from Indonesia. Okay. Next. 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 And then e-government. You know what e-government is? What is e-government? Huh? E-government. E means? Huh? Electronic, right? Electronic government. It's, uh, in other words, it's a, it is a paperless government. Paperless. No paper. Everything is done inside computer. Uh, why? 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 More efficient, more efficient, and more transparent. So by doing so, by introducing e-government, we can eliminate what? Corruption. So Korea, Korea uh, invested a lot to have e-government, which we started in early 80s, 1980s, even before you were born. And then Korea now, uh, it is what United Nations is saying. Korea is number one in the field of EGA. That's what United Nations is saying. So uh, we want to 
I mean, share our experience with Indonesia. And then, as you know, the President Jokowi is emphasizing e-government, right? Okay. And then, cooperation is going smoothly. ICT also. Next. Next. SEPA. Early SEPA. Comprehensive Economic Partnership Agreement. It is something like FTA. You know FTA, Free Trade Agreement. So SEPA negotiation is going on between the two countries. So we want to have more liberalized economic relations between our two countries. That's why we are having discussion on SEPA. Next. Employment. Uh, next. Yeah, forestry too. Forestry too. You have big forest here. Kutak. And then uh, this is uh, one of the areas where we have I mean, the closest uh, cooperation. Next. Let me take off my jacket. Here I find more girls than boys, more ladies than gentlemen. Why? Why? Mostly ladies. Indonesia? <laughs> really? Absolutely bigger number of ladies. I have two daughters. I have two daughters. In Korea, you know the before Korea used to be a male chauvinistic society. You know what male chauvinistic society? Men huh? have priority. Men are more important than women, simply speaking. Male chauvinistic society. But now it's totally different. Totally different. And then uh, the girls are doing better than boys. For example, my ministry Every year, we recruit uh, between 25 to 30 I mean, the young men and women. And at least 50% are women these days. And even uh, depending on the years, the, the figure goes up to 75. So now, the, my, my foreign ministry is full of ladies. So, for example, what department? Department of International Organizations. Small lady. No man at all. So, each floor, that I, we have one uh, toilet for men and one toilet for ladies. But in this floor, female, I mean, the ladies, a lot more. So once we got rid of the man toilet, <laughs> you go, once you go, huh? one floor up or one floor down. That is reality. So it is becoming, Korean society is becoming female dominating, dominated society. And then I welcome that because I have two daughters. <laughs> I will have both. Next. 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 Hmm. Education. Education. Uh, I heard that the Juk Jakarta is, is a city of education, the province of education. So many universities. More than 180, including Ugyen. Yes, yes. So, I mean, in my impression is that Juk is a brain of Indonesia, full of universities. And then uh, in the in area of education, uh, cooperation is going on between the two governments and then between the universities. Uh, this morning I met with your vice rector. Uh, I had a good discussion. So uh, my government is trying to provide uh, as many scholarships as possible to students in Indonesia, so that giving you a chance to study in Korea. Here, 
Uh, we have students from uh, Korea department here. Uh, study Korea. Uh, you you are studying the Bahasa Korea. Uh, I'm here. Ah, oh, I see. I see. I see. So I'm so glad to see you here. Okay, next. Okay, next. These are the pictures of festival, the cultural festival, a joint festival between Indonesia and Korea held in uh, Jakarta. Uh, Harmony Bersama. Korea Indonesia Festival. Uh, and yes, you know the, the, the picture of uh, right upper right picture of Buddhist at the Korea Indonesia Festival, they are they are about to match up.
And then that was the beginning of division. And then in 1950, North Korea invaded South Korea. Why? Why? To unify the Korean Peninsula under the flag of communism. But so there was war from 1950 to 1953 for three years. And then around one million people were killed. One million. Satojata. And then after that, we began to see division, permanent division. And then, you know, the, the Korean Peninsula is now under armistice. You know what armistice means? Armistice, truth. Armistice does not mean the permanent end of war. Just war, war. It was put on hold, you understand? Stop temporarily. So it is just armistice, not permanent peace. So now this is the longest running armistice in the world. How many years? From 1953 till now. Armistice. So we do not have permanent peace agreement between the two Koreans. So that means we are enjoying very fragile peace. Fragile peace. It's just armistice. War has not stopped, technically speaking. Understand? Normally? And then, unfortunately, we are still living under the division. And then, we are same people. For example, uh, sometimes I, I receive this kind of question from uh, Indonesian gentlemen. Uh, how many, how do you say, the suku? Suku? Suku is five? Yes. Three, uh, suku or suku are there in, in Korea. Here you have uh, Otawi, huh? uh, under hundreds. Then my answer, only one. Uh, only one. Korea is a small country. The same ethnic. Same like Satu Bahasa. So, uh, well, unfortunately, we are divided. 50 million are living in the south, and then 23 million are living in the north. So, uh, we are living in a very tense situation. We don't know when war will break out again. So our prime goal is this one, to avoid second war. Because we will lose many things. We will go back to 1950s, right? That is our first goal. In other words, our prime goal is to maintain peace and prosperity on the Korean Peninsula. Of course, we want to get reunited. We want to become one country again. We do not forget that. But our imminent goal is to maintain peace. In other words, war is not our option in trying to get reunited. We need to achieve reunification peacefully. Through peaceful means. Otherwise, nobody will support that. But, I mean, North Korea, North Korea, uh, have you heard about the North Korea's nuclear ambition? Have you heard about that? So, somebody can tell me what that means, North Korea nuclear ambition. Oh, first, today I brought many hadiah gifts for you. If you raise your hand, we will give you a gift. Uh, so, uh, what is I mean, the North Korea's nuclear ambition? Tell me briefly, tell me briefly. What, you know? what is North Korea trying to do? Anybody? Please stand up. In a loud voice. Loud voice. Uh, in Indonesia, 
Dia melawan Inggris saya. Bahasa Indonesia, bahasa Indonesia. Untuk bahasa Indonesia. Terima kasih. Menurut saya, ambisi UB, UB Ambition of North Korea, itu sebenarnya sebuah ambisi gila. Soalnya, ya mereka tuh belum berkecukup, belum berkecukup, berkecukupan di berbagai bidang, tapi udah bela-belain buat bikin nuklir. Dan itu gak penting banget. Terima kasih. Oh, thank you, thank you. Maybe you explain better than I. Oh, please, please. So, check. Yeah. Uh, if we uh, talk about that nuclear, North Korean nuclear, we must back to the history. So, the fight between the two states, uh, that's because of that user uh, explained before from Soviet Union, now known as Russia, Russia, and then the uh, South is United States. So, about the nuclear, uh, they trying to track the uh, United States and the war of United Nations because uh, of something that uh, our friends talk about before, that was a crazy mission. Because uh, we know that in North Korea, they, they suffer some economic problems. Uh, we see that. Because, of course, uh, we very knew uh, about six weeks or one month ago, uh, Kim Jong-un visits Putin. We don't know, uh, but he canceled that. So, we can see that uh, they are in trouble, uh, but they still try to track the world war. I think uh, that was the act. But they want to track the world war, but they did not have economical power. So their nuclear is maybe the topic, no, not right. They're trying to test that, but the, the main is not, not so, not like, not like much like nuclear. Okay, thank you for that. Thank you. Please. Okay, thank you. Uh, maybe uh, talk about of the North Korea nuclear ambition is about two war. The first is the deterrence power, and the two is the attack. Uh, maybe North Korea uh, have need uh, uh, tension from the war. Need tension about the maybe of the crisis of food. Uh, yes. Uh, and then maybe the law of the economic power. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, oh yeah, yes, yes, yes. Yeah, I really disagree with this guy. Say that because I, as as we know that uh, North Korea, in fact, we we look at in the history, he's trying to make the nuclear weapon for pre prepare for the war. I mean, Kim Jong-un think that I, it's my perspective that I think the World War is not over yet. Maybe someday, in the future, there is a World War III. So he's prepared his country to try to like, I mean, I need the nuclear weapon to send the nuclear weapon and kind of like that. Which is, he wants to comp compete with the US, United States. You know, because as we know, the Union Soviet, it's in, there's no one here right now. So I think the com communist is just, just like some country in here. So I want to try to make the peace with a war, not peacefully. And with, in the way of the nuclear weapon. I think that's kind of like that. Thank you very much. Oh, thank you, thank you. Uh, I know that uh, you have you know quite well about uh, Korean peace love. 
actually uh, more than I had expected. You have, I mean, you know more than I had expected. So I'm glad to know that. So as you uh, rightly said, uh, North Korea has a crazy I mean, ambition. They are trying to develop nuclear weapons. And then uh, I can say one thing for sure. Uh, do you want to see one more country which has nuclear weapons in the world? We South Korean people know that. We do not welcome nuclear weapons. Of course, uh, you may think that this is South Korea's problem. Yeah, that's right. That's right. South Korea, you know, there's a border between North and South Korea. The border is just one hour drive from Seoul. One hour drive. So it is our problem. And then uh, on the other side of the border, in the North Korean side, on the North Korean side, we have they have 1.2 million soldiers. 1.2 million. Satukumadwa Juta. Can you imagine that? How big is your army? Indonesian army, all together. Udara, Lao, Angkatan. As far as I know, around 400,000. You have big population. The Euro size army is just less than 500,000. But North Korea, they have 23 million population. But they have 1.2 million soldiers. And then most of them, and, and, uh, uh, there are uh, the, the near from border between North and South Korea. So, where do you get if you drive one hour from here for one hour? Where do you get? If you drive for one hour from here, where do you get? Tell me. For example, Solo, Solo. So in Solo, you have 1.2 million enemies. <laughs> that is our situation. And then you, you're having 1.2 million enemies are trying to get uh, nuclear weapons. What are they going to do with that? To kill you, they will try to kill At least they will try to threaten you, right? Can you stand that? Can you accept that? That is the situation of Korean Peninsula. So for example, your neighbor, your neighbor, he's sharpening knife every night. <laughs> and then you hear the sound. Can you have a good sleep? That is the situation for the Korean Peninsula. That is why now we are doing our best to stop them from trying to develop nuclear weapons. And then we are doing two things. When I say we, uh, mainly South Korea, Japan, America, China, Russia, there is a six party talks participated by six countries. First, South and North Korea, America, Japan, China, Russia. So, uh, for the last almost 20 years, we had discussion with North Korea to dissuade them, you know, dissuade them, to stop them from doing this kind of wrong thing. But we must admit that we failed as of today, we failed. So we are doing two things, trying to persuade North Korea and then putting pressure on North Korea. But by pressure, I do not mean military something. Sanctioned by United Nations, right? Making them feel pain, you shouldn't do that. So that is the goal, two-track approach. Our goal, our goal is to change North Korea is to make North Korea to change. So, we want North Korea to become a normal member of the international community, like Indonesia, South Korea, Japan, Philippines, Malaysia. And then, as you pointed out, they have problems, their economy, right? Underdeveloped, very poor. People are starving there. Every year, they are suffering from the shortage of food. So people, especially young, they, I, mean, I mean, little babies, they do not get enough food. Then, they can change the course 
they, they forget about giving their ambition, and they can borrow money on them, loan. Get, they can get loan from ADB, you know, ADB, Asia Development Bank, IMF, International Monetary Fund, or World Bank, whatever from Indonesia, from South Korea, from Japan, and then they can use that money to develop their own economy. That is what most Korean people want. They want bread. Right? You are hungry, love up. What do you want? You want bread. I want to eat bread. What do you want? The people cannot eat new blue weapons. Right? That is the right thing to do for government. Otherwise, at times of election, you will cast ballot to other people, right? But unfortunately, there's nothing like election in most people. That is the problem. So, my message, please join us in persuading North Korea. Please send the same message to North Korea. It's not a good thing. You should stop that. It, it worries us. I don't want to see any more nuclear weapons. Right? This world is trying to decrease the number of nuclear weapons. Right? Do you know NPT? NPT? Have you heard about NPT? What is NPT? Not proliferation treaty. That is a treaty signed by many, many countries, including Indonesia and South Korea. There, NPT is made of three pillars. First, no more nuclear weapons. And then, no proliferation of technology, which is needed to make nuclear weapons. Third, decrease the number of atomic bombs, which already exist. America, China, France, Russia, they are UK already have new atomic weapons, right? So they agreed to decrease the number. And then they agreed not to go for proliferation. And then every country agreed, promised not to develop nuclear weapons. So once North Korea joined the NPT, if you join the NPT, you promise three things, right? In return, you can enjoy technology transport for what? Technology for peaceful use of atomic energy, right? The advanced countries, they have technology. Nuclear power plant, something like that. So North Korea joined NPT. They enjoy technology transport. And then they walk out of the NPT. And then they are using the technology to develop in their lives. This is cheating. First case in the history of NPT. We should not allow that. Then what will happen to NPT? Who will respect NPT? Indonesia? You promised, and then you kept, right? South Korea promised and kept, still. That is rule. That is gentleman's, right? Agreement. So in every sense, we need, we need, we need to get united in trying to stop North Korea from going further on this dangerous road. That is good for Korea, that is good for Indonesia. And we do not want to see the proliferation of nuclear weapons. That is a nightmare for us. What will they begin to do with nuclear weapons? Maybe they will threaten South Korea. So do we have to live under the threat? We do need, for example, for example, just one hour's drive from here, you have enemies with nuclear weapons in their hand. They are threatening you. What, what would you do? Okay, okay, okay. You say, okay, okay. You will live in that kind of servitude? No. You feel pride, right? As a nation. How can you live under the threat forever? But that's the reality of the Korean Peninsula. Very serious one. And then, who knows? There will be second, third North Korea. North Korea got nuclear weapons. Why not me? Why not me? Huh? Do you want to see that? Do you want to see the collapse of NPT? Is it the good news for Indonesia? So, my point is this your story, your problem. Now, you think that is South Korea's problem. But you know, 
that is just the beginning of problem. This problem will soon become yours. Because we are closely related, everybody is related now, into wine. South Korea is not free from the problems in Indonesia, and vice versa. We are living in a real-time world, right? The news and the instance are moving real-time. So, we have same destiny as a human being, human time. So, this is what I wanted to tell you. Please uh, pay attention to what's going on in North Korea. And then please join us in trying to make this world a better place, more livable place for you and for us. Thank you. <laughs> I will do my best to answer your questions. And then, as I told you, we prepared small but very good comment. Okay, I think for our first sessions, we will invite three persons who want to do the questions. Cheers. Uh, I choose. Lady. Microphone. So I'm here to ask because how your government, I mean South Korean government, perceive the culture of yours. I mean, uh, it is well known that Hollywood wave right now is spreading all over the world. It helps you in promoting not only the culture itself but also the the political aspect and also the economic aspect of course because the idols holding concerts all over the world would gain income for your country and also for the political impact is for example in my case that I, I joined international relations department because I would like to study about the politics between Indonesia and South Korea so I think uh, it helps your government a lot in promoting not only the culture but also the political and economy so how your government rewards them I mean the culture and the entertainment promotion over there. Thank you very much. Oh uh, yeah, uh, the culture uh, is very important, and the cultural diplomacy is very important. I would I would say uh, public diplomacy, uh, including culture. So diplomacy, when we say diplomacy, I mean uh, originally. The last definition is diplomacy is between the government. Because government, state, nation, who would this I mean, uh, diplomacy. But these days, change, total change. So we find diplomacy by government toward people. And then we see diplomacy being done between the people, two people. So we call that kind of diplomacy, but between government and people, between the two people, we call it public diplomacy. This is one part of public diplomacy. I'm talking to you, students. Before, maybe 30 years ago, we used to go to foreign ministry, that's it. But we have been now trying to get direct contact with people. Indonesian people, Korean people, this is public diplomacy. This is very, very important in many, many, in all the countries, including America. So, culture, uh, maybe the islands, uh, K pop, is just one part of uh, cultural diplomacy. But that is not the diplomacy being done by my government. They are the private singers, right? Artists. Anyway, uh, that kind of public diplomacy, cultural diplomacy is really, very really important. That's it, like our view. Yes. Hello, uh, Jay Roman Prima Emida. Uh, I'm a graduate student of communication science, which has been uh, which hasn't been mentioned. Uh, in 2011, I wrote research about Korean footballers. 
uh, how they adapt with Indonesian culture. And I heard from them that actually learning second language in Korea is not too important compared with uh, such as Indonesia who learn English as second language. So how does your government uh, prepare the citizens of Korea to face the uh, globalization challenges? And also how the government uh, stimulates the nationalism of Korea? Thank you. Actually, our government is very emphasized on English education or secondary education. And also, we, our government invites all foreigners from the abroad to Korea. Um, we are sponsor, giving sponsorship, like KGSP, Korean government sponsorship. Like, it's quite a, lot of, quite a lot of money, money. So, actually, we are preparing for young generation. We are preparing to, to interact with globalization and people abroad. So, just um, correcting the answer. Okay, thank you so much. Next question? Yes. Hello. I'd like to ask about the prospects of increasing the relationship between South and North Korea. Uh, the first one is about the mobilization of Kaesong Industrial Complex, where uh, the other countries can also invest in the Kaesong Industrial Complex. And the experts say that uh, the countries that can invest, such as the, there are potential to invest, such as China and Southeast Asia, including Indonesia. So I would like to um, know about Mr. Chatayong. Uh, opinion about this and especially about in what Indonesia can do about this uh, issue. And the second one is about the establishment of World Peace Park in the demilitarization of Southern North Korea. And I would like to know about the updates of the this uh, this issue. Uh, yeah, yeah, World Peace Park. Yeah, is there any updates about that? 
was surprised, I mean, uh, to know that you have such a deep understanding of I mean, what's going on on the Korean Peninsula. Really amazing. Uh, first question, Gaston Industrial Complex. Let me give you a brief explanation. Uh, here's Korean Peninsula, it's the northern part of North Korea. There's a border. In the northern part, in the North Korean area, the near front border, there's a city named Gaesung. Gaesung is the name of city. And then there, uh, we uh, made uh, industrial zone for South Korean business companies with the permission of North Korean government, right? Because it is located in North Korean area. So this is a joint project between the two Koreas. Lies exist in North, Northern area, the North, North Korean part, but South Korean business companies go there, employ North Korean workers, produce something, and then bring it to South Korea. Some, some of them are export. This is Kaesong Industrial Complex. Uh, then why do uh, South Korean companies go there? Why? Because the uh, labor is cheaper there, a lot cheaper than South Korea. And second, the North Korean workers, they speak the same language. So we can easily communicate with them, right? Those are merits for the South Korean business entrepreneur. So this uh, project, Kaesom Industrial Complex, played a great role in promoting the cooperation between the two Koreas. And then uh, by doing so, um, they contributed to the promotion of peace on the Korean Peninsula. So still it's going on, going on. And then uh, we attach great importance to this project. Uh, but at the same time, at the same time, uh, so there's an agreement, agreement and the terms of reference. For example, how much do we pay as a salary? to those per workers. And then what will be the rate of increase, annual rate of increase of the pay? So there are I mean, very detailed agreements. But sometimes uh, North Korean authority goes against this rule agreement. They, I mean, unilaterally, when they declare that, no, oh, this year, I mean, for example, uh, the, the, the maximum Maximum rate of increase of pay is 5% annual. The wage cannot be increased more than that. But suddenly, I mean, no screen authority said, oh, this year, 5.5%. Uh, the unilateral declare. We cannot accept that. We cannot. Rule is rule. Principle is principle. If you allow them to do so, they will violate another rule. They will violate another rule. So we cannot accept that. So we are having uh, those kinds of problems, but anyway, the project is going on, and then it is uh, uh, making a contribution to uh, the peace and prosperity of the Korean Peninsula. And second question was, uh, and then uh, you know the there is an area between the North and South Korea, the, the width of it is four kilometers. So two kilometers northward from border. Two kilometers southward from border, altogether four kilometer wide zone. That is buffer zone. So two sides, North Korea and South Korea, cannot enter that area. Simply speaking, so that is buffer zone. Otherwise, if we, I mean, the, are too close to them, who knows? They will begin to fight again, right? So that is the purpose of buffer zone. And the official name of that buffer zone is DMZ. DMZ. Demilitarized zone, EMZ. She's talking about that. And then uh, last year, oh no, no, two years ago, two years ago, we proposed, we made a proposal to North Korea. Let us build world peace park there as a symbol of world peace. This is this area is filled with landmine, very dangerous area. But at the same time, this area is a paradise for animals. Human beings who are not allowed to enter. For the last, how many, 62 years, after 1953, right? By mathematics, right? Mm -hmm. So this is paradise for animals. 
So why don't we build what is up there? Big proposal. But unfortunately, we did not get hostess from North Korea. So we are still trying to persuade North Korea. This is good for you, good for us. Not, nothing political. Huh? I mean, win-win situation. What do you lose? I mean, it, what is up there? So that is our proposal. But, I mean, I We have 15 more minutes. Salam alaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. First, this is not only South Korea problem. This is not only Indonesian problem. This is world problem and especially UN problem. Uh, I mean UN was failed to do that job to, to bring peace in our world and my question is what is UN do now uh, to fix this problem in North Korea maybe maybe UN can uh, use their authority to do disarmament do you get what I mean? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I got your point. I got your yeah, point. Yeah, thank you. Yeah. Yes, but I do not agree with you. I got your point. I have a opinion. This is democracy. I, I, I do not think United Nations is all helpful. United Nations is not a superman. <laughs> but anyway, United Nations. But think about that. If we had not had United Nations, what would the world be like? Maybe we will find ourselves in worse situation. So that is positive perspective, right? Uh, you are saying negative things. Uh, you, you are looking at the negative aspect of you. But I'm looking at the positive aspect. United Nations made a contribution. But not perfect contribution, I agree. But do you find Superman here? So, in that sense too, we need to cooperate each other. One country cannot solve problem, but when we join together, we can achieve more. Right? And then, especially, we are living in a world which is closely intertwined, right? Connected each other. So your problem is our problem, my problem. My problem is your problem. So, we need to pay close attention to what's going on in the other part of the world. And then, for example, you know the rule of the uh, non-intervention of domestic affairs, right? For example, I'm a diplomat. There's iron rule. I'm not allowed to make a comment on your political situation, domestic political situation. That is your, 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 I mean, your problem, uh, you, your situation. So this is a, basically speaking, this is a rule of non-intervention of domestic affairs. We are not every country, all the country, and any country, no country is allowed to intervene uh, in another country's domestic affairs. But there are exceptions. Except what is, what are those exceptions? One example, human rights problem is no more domestic affairs. When somebody is being beaten, tortured, killed, we cannot look the other way because we are the same human beings. That is the exception of non-intervention of domestic affairs. So in that sense too, uh, every year in Geneva, Geneva, the United Nations resolution on human rights situation in North Korea is being adopted every year. And then many, many countries supporting that resolution are saying that you North Korean authority should stop abusing your own people. Treat them better. And then South Korea too. We are also being criticized by the State Department of the United States. They say we have human rights problem. So you should correct them. They are saying so. 
But then in Indonesia too, there is peer pressure, you know peer pressure. Everybody is criticizing everybody. For what? Just for criticizing? No, that's not our goal. We want to improve this world. Right? So uh, in that sense too, we need to keep saying so North Korea so that they treat their own people decently. Please, please. Hello, my name is Lisa. I really uh, want to know your opinion about this. Uh, I'm from International Relations and in our class, uh, we are kind of wondering why in East Asia there isn't any uh, international and uh, regional institution or international organization such as Asian or European Union or African Union. When you're kind uh, of, you mean Northeast Asia? Yes, uh, Northeast Asia. Formal institution of your region, mm -hmm. like East Asia, with China and Japan or even North Korea. And we are wondering because uh, in our hypothesis, we only uh, guess that it's because of historical sentiment that like, uh, you were colonized by Japan and also uh, in your past dynasties, such as Han Dynasty or something like that, you have a very good historical sentiment and you cannot make because of that. Uh, maybe I want to know other reason besides that. I think that's it. Thank you. Uh, the, the first question is a very painful question for us. <laughs> you're right, you're right, you're right. South Korea, you have wonderful mechanism, right? ASEAN. ASEAN. Indonesia is a member of ASEAN, right? So, frankly speaking, we envy you. We envy you. And then the Korea, uh, China, Japan, three Northeast Asian countries. We need to have uh, equivalent of ASEAN. We need to have regional cooperation mechanism. Unfortunately, we do not have. Uh, so that is our homework and task. Uh, we need to benchmark, learn from you. And we have to admit that. Then why we do not see that kind of regional cooperation mechanism in Northeast Asia? Different, I, mean, I do not have I mean, the correct answer. I don't have preference, but my feeling is that, as you rightly pointed out, uh, I mean the Northeast Asia is is rather overshadowed by the past history. So many, I mean, the people in Southeast Asia, Europe, and Africa, Latin America, they're saying we need to go forward past this past. Uh, we are not asking you to forget, but you to overcome history. That is the advice for us. Uh, we respect that advice, and I personally think that's right. But at the same time, at the same time, uh, we should not forget the principle. Principle. You know, what is the principle? So, simply speaking, simply speaking, Korea, including North and South Korea. And China are victims, right? And then, who made us victims in, in Northeast Asia? The bomb. The bomb. So, China and Korea, and especially Korea, I can say for sure for Korea, we are asking them, we are asking them this question. Do you regret? the wrong things you have done to us, wrong things, right? And then do you repent? Do you, and then, are you willing to apologize? Uh, and then they say yes. And they say, yes, I've already apologized. It's true, it's true. Uh, in 1990, for example, they, uh, they made a written apology in the name of Prime Minister. Then why South Korea people are talking about history on and on and on and on? South Korean people 
uh, hostages of past history. That is your impression, right? But our is, is that no, no, no. We are not hostages of history. We are not living in the past. At the same time, we are asking Japanese people, okay, you apologize. Then live up to your apology. If you said you repent, they said, I will repent. I mean, we did wrong things to South Korea because they uh, did colonial work for 36 years. And then live up to your apology. Act accordingly. But sometimes, in our eyes, their actions are different from what they have said. Then, what should we do? We begin to say, hey, isn't this strange? Did you really repent? What was your apology? That is our sentiment. And then Japan said, Japanese people, government people said, how many times do I have to apologize? And then we said, no, 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 no. We are not asking you to apologize on and on and on. We are asking you to live up to what you said, to live up to your to respect your own approach. That is the story going on in Northeast Asia. And the Chinese government, the Chinese people are saying almost the same things. So please don't misunderstand us. We want to go forward, of course. We do not forget the history, but we are more than willing to go forward over to the history, history, past history. But at the same time, there should be a minimum principle. That is the principle we believe there should be. You have to be. That is my answer. What do you think of that? Huh? Dr. Make sense? Okay. Good. Okay. Yeah. Uh, well, let me introduce myself. I'm Henry from Korean Language Department, University of Korea. Well, I ask using Korean or English? Korean? Yeah. Right. You can speak in Korean too. Yeah. Uh, okay, I will start with English and then Korean. Uh, okay, uh, Henry and I have a question. I have a question for you. I have a question for Okay. Uh, I'm curious about cultural relations between Korean and North uh, between South Korea and North Korea. Yes, I heard that in North Korea there's a law that if there's a North Korean people listen or watching Korean movies, it's not allowed. They can't get the penalty. Yes, I heard that news that happens. Uh, and what is your opinion about that? And what will uh, what will we do to solve it? Yeah, I think it's it's about human right problems, right? Yeah. 제가 어 한국 사람들이 그 한국 노래나 한국 드라마 보면 만든다는 법이 있다 그러더라고요. 네, 그거. According to our information, yes, uh, North Korean uh, residents people they are punished when they watch uh, South Korean uh, soap opera, TV drama, uh, movies. Uh, so, uh, unfortunately, uh, it is true. Uh, according to our information, uh, so uh, we want. We want uh, North Korea to become a normal society like Indonesia and Korea. You can watch whatever you want to watch, right? Huh? And then uh, you can say anything freely, right? Of course, there is a restriction too. Uh, you cannot, I mean, uh, uh, say anything uh, which is not true about your friend or your professor, right? Then you are punished, right? Then that is universal rule. But otherwise you are free. You are free to say anything. So we want those people to become that kind of society 
And then uh, I think we can tell it's good for North Korea too. So think about nuclear issues, take care of your own people, please try to develop your own economy. And if you want, we South Korean brothers and sisters are more than American, it's of you, they have a massive blessing. Actually, I have the same question with my friend who uh, asked about the non access non access of all regional organization in East Asia. But you have answered that question, and now I have a new question. Maybe it will become more pers a personal question uh, for your Excellency. So, uh, you said that you're a Christian, and I put a big concern about Christianity in political behavior. So, as a Christian, which emphasizes on, on the value of love your enemy, so how much is this? this principle of love your enemy to your political behavior regarding to the uh, uh, to the past sentiment about the Japanese and Chinese coloni colonialization in Korea. Is that good? Uh, okay. Uh, you said you're a Christian and I put a big concern about Christianity values in political behavior. So my question is, how much the, the Christianity values which emphasize love your enemy to your political behavior, behavior regarding the, uh, the sentiment about the, ja the Japanese and Chinese colonial colonialization in Korea? Thank you. Yes. Personally, I'm a Christian, uh, but in Korea, like in Indonesia maybe, we have rule of separation government from church, right? So, uh, for example, let's say President is Christian, but she should not mix up her religion when she plays the role of president. That is a separation of government from church, right? So, but as human beings, we are advised to love our friends, even our enemies, right? So, we have love for North Korean leaders. We have love for Japanese leaders. Right. right? That is true. But at the same time, as I told you, there must be a there should be peace. Right? Not everything is accepted. So we are trying to change them. And we are trying to I mean, say right thing to our friends in North Korea and Japan. As I told you, if you say, if you are saying that you have already apologized, that is okay. Leave off your apology. That is our message. Then to North Korea, you should not do that. You should treat that's good for you. We are not trying to show you. We are not trying to get rid of North Korean regime. That is not our goal. We have no intention to depend on military means. We are trying to change North Korea peacefully. We are trying to achieve reunification peacefully. But we are taking, adopt, we adopted two travel approach, persuasion and putting pressure. Right? That is all. Okay, last question. Last question. The lady.
Thank <laughs> you. 